हेलो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट मास्टरी लर्निंग दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज रिलेटिवली एन ओल्ड कॉन्सेप्ट बट इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट वेन वी डिस्कस अबाउट लर्निंग एंड स्टूडेंट्स अचीवमेंट लेट्स डिस्कस ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ अवर सेशन वुड बी एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन यू विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मास्टरी लर्निंग elaborate the basic principles of mastery learning state the impact of mastery learning in education and discuss advantages and limitations of mastery learning we'll touch upon the following topics what is mastery learning basic principles of mastery learning how mastery learning impacts education problems with mastery learning how to instruct the mastery impact on learning advantages and limitations so what is mastery learning let's start with john carroll who wrote about learning rate learners learning process in way back in 1963 he said student aptitudes are reflective of an individual's re- learning rate instruction should focus more on the time required for different students to learn the same material isn't it in the contrast of our regular conventional concept of learning our classic model about learning says that the time is constant teacher teaching in a particular time frame will be constant and students achievement will depend on their own pace how they achieve how they understand content in the given constant time frame so here we mainly focus on learners ability to grasp to understand in that constant time span then what does mastery learning say mastery learning in contrast of what we now said says that learning rate is the function of time spent for learning divided by time needed to learn the learning rate depends on or is a function of whatever time a learner has spent to learn to the time he or she actually needs to learn in any given situation of instruction so carol's new theory was based on the idea that all learners can have the potential to learn any instruction given but take different amount of time to do so so if we see this function then we realize that any learner can reach to a certain level of achievement provided time taken by each learner may be different so every learner can take different amount of time but ultimately all learners are capable of learning to the extent that instructor decides that all learner should reach to that's why this is against the classic model in classic model we think of different learners ex- performing differently and here carol says that every learner can perform to at least a minimum level decided by the instructor provided we allot give different amount of time to every learner so when a learner's aptitude is the context as an index then students are not seen as good or bad learners but they are seen as fast or slow learners what happens in classic model in classic model we say let's see this particular learner could not achieve the content that learner was so fast and was good so we actually label all learners as good learners bad learners learners who could not grasp the concept become bad learners and the learners who could grasp the content concepts become good learners so in the given time frame learners are learning and they are being stamped as good or bad learners here let us remember about the normal probability curve do you know how generally achievement test used to be developed we have assumption that in our class 
at least 50 to 60 percent students are average students. So, in any given test, they will perform say from 40 percent to 60 percent. Now, we will have some students who will perform from 60 to 80 percent and at the same time some students will fail, they will perform from 20 percent to 40 percent. We also have in our class some students who will achieve or score more than 80 percent say 90 percent, 95 percent and we will have some students who will not be able to even increase their scores about 20 percent. This kind of mass normal probability curve is rejected by the concept of mastery learning. Mastery learning says that there should not be this kind of normal probability in the class. On the contrary, we should help almost all students or at least 80 percent students to raise more to score high. Let us see how. Perseverance of the student and opportunity provided to the students actually determine their learning rate. So, the factors affecting learning rate are majorly these two. The amount of time student spends, student is willing to spend to learn a particular content decides how much mastery that learner will achieve. The second concept is opportunity to learn. So, if we give proper opportunities to all students to learn, then there are chances that each and every student tries to raise to mastery learning level. That is why Dr. Benjamin Bloom said that every learner's learning rate depends on that learner's aptitude. That is the degree to level of performance of that particular learner. Bloom also says that opportunity to learn and quality of the instruction should be controlled by the instructor. So, instructor should manage all possible opportunities for the learners and instructor should also be able to ensure that each learner can attain the specific objectives. So, this is ultimately responsibility of the instructor to see whether almost all students of his or her class are achieving specified objectives or not. So, again coming back to our classic model. In our classic model, time is constant and achievement varies. And in the concept of mastery learning, achievement is constant and time required for every student varies. So, in that particular time, students may not be able to achieve objectives, but if we decide that whatever time required by students should be given to the, them, but achievement should be up to this level. At least so many of outcomes should be achieved or every outcome should be achieved at least till this particular level. Then we understand that every learner is not going to spend the same amount of time, every student's time may vary. That is why mastery learning proposes that all learners can learn when provided with the appropriate learning condition. So, each and every learner of that particular level has potentials to achieve outcomes. But we need to give enough time and help learners. So, given enough time and help, about 80 percent of the learners in any group can gain complete mastery of the design or designated instructional outcomes. Here, enough time and help is important. So, 80 percent of learners can learn what is normally taught in schools if they are given enough time and appropriate instruction. How do we define enough time? Enough time is equal to time required to demonstrate mastery of objectives. As we discussed earlier, this time will vary per student. The second concern is appropriate instruction. The instructor should be careful that the course is given provided in many small units, small chunks and instructor must identify objectives for every unit so that the instructor can plan for learning environment which will help learners to achieve those identified objectives. So, if we take care of these two things, 
two aspects, then we can certainly claim that we are trying to achieve mastery in teaching learning situation. So basically, when we say that the entire content is divided, analyzed into small chunks, every chunk, every unit has predefined objectives, then it is our responsibility to see that the learner is achieving objectives of one chunk, then proceeding to the other chunk, achieving mastery over that chunk, then proceeding to the third chunk. This is how if learner goes on achieving one one chunk and then proceed, then we are sure that the learner will certainly achieve mastery over the whole content. The next basic principle of mastery is grades. Grades may be determined by actual number of objectives mastered, number of units completed, proficiency level reached on each unit and here minimum 80% is expected and any combination of above. Generally, as I said, so far we have been focusing on normal probability curve and we hardly care about how many students have achieved mastery. Here it becomes our responsibility that we decide grades of students on these basis, whether the students have achieved at least 80% performance level, whether students have achieved all outcomes or at least 80% of outcomes, how many units the learner has completed or any combination of these kind of parameters and depending on this, we can decide grades of the learners. If we imagine this kind of scenario for mastery learning, is it that easy? There are certainly several challenges in planning for mastery learning. Most importantly because now time is not constant. So grouping and scheduling must be difficult. Teachers may find it difficult to group learners with similar rate of learning. Because when we say that there are different kind of students in the class, there may be some students who can grasp content or acquire skill in less time or there may be some students who need more time to acquire the same skills. So grouping students as per their time pace, needed pace is different, then we need to group them, schedule for their learning. So scheduling learning for individuals is a very small, for a way or a very small group of learners is challenging. Here the question is, if we are making groups as per their pace of learning, then what do we do with the learners who complete their learning in less time? It is easier to expect a constant pace and to complete tasks at, at a predictable rate because when we uh, use lecture method, we assume that this is my average rate and I assume that most of the students of the class are understanding at the rate I am explaining the things. But now here we are allowing wide variation in activities within a class. We are arranging separate activities for those who require more time and we are arranging act separate activities for those who complete their content or achieve their outcomes in less time. Now the challenge here is what do our learners do when slow learners or the learners who are requiring more time are spending extra time. Learners, those who have already achieved outcomes may be forced to wait. How do we engage these learners? So we need to plan various activities and different activities for those who are achieving outcomes in advance. Why do we take up all these challenges? Does mastery learning really impact education? Mastery learning is an instructional strategy which is based on the principle that all students can achieve a set of reasonable objectives with appropriate instruction and sufficient time to learn. So here we need to assume that almost all students in my class can achieve reasonable objectives, a set of reasonable objectives. Of course, we need to provide proper instruction, conducive environment, creative learning environment and sufficient time for all learners to learn. How does mastery learning impact nature of learning material? When we 
plan to achieve mastery, then even the process of learning will require such a material which is divided into structured, hierarchical and sequential chunks. So naturally, the entire material, its level, its nature, its process will change and we can come out with a standard quality material. An establishment, an stop, pause, cut karawala gilte. An established level of performance representing mastery of a given skill or concept is associated with every small chunk. So here we are not only analyzing our content into small chunks, but we are setting outcomes for every small chunk. So that we can see that for this particular chunk, outcomes are achieved or not. Then the second chunk and its uh, outcomes. How do we see that? So we also need to plan formative test for every chunk, for every unit. So learners will be given corrective instruction for that chunk before proceeding and in this manner learners will go on mastering outcomes of all units. So we understand that concept of mastery learning will have impact on all aspects of education. When we talk about curriculum, now here we are not talking about a content because mastery is not mugging up or remembering that content. But mastery learning will be achieved through process of learning and this process of learning will be important and even while designing curriculum, we will focus on learners skills of learning. Even now, the nature of curriculum will change because the curriculum needs to be unitwise, divided into proper chunks which will have outcomes listed for every small unit. So modular approach, the approach in which curriculum is well defined, well structured can be said that is a, as an effect or a product of mastery learning concept. Another most important impact of mastery learning on the entire education system is criterion reference test. When we talk again about normal probability curve, we generally talk about ranking. Do you remember when in old times ranking was very important? Who comes first in the class? Who comes second in the class? Who is the last ranker of the class? These things were really important. But if you talk about mastery learning, we are not talking about comparing students of our class. We are talking about outcomes. We are talking about criteria on the basis of which we are assessing our learners. So the content is modular, our curriculum is modular, objectives are defined for every unit and we are eager to see, we are planning our instruction in such a manner that at least 80% learners of our class achieve outcomes of every unit. So the entire test is based on or the tests are dev developed in light of outcomes and not uh, some easy questions, some difficult questions so as to create normal probability in the class. We are not aiming for norm reference test anymore. So this is how the field of assessment has also changed. We are talking about small chunks, assessments, well-defined outcomes and testing whether these outcomes are achieved and that's why we also ensure numerous feedback loops. Here we are focus on corrective feedback so that if the learner is failing to achieve outcomes at that particular level, we provide constructive feedback we provide informative feedback and we make sure that the learner is achieving outcomes of that small unit before proceeding. That's why many formative and diagnostic tests need to be planned. We need to diagnose students if they are failing and we need to provide them remedy for achieving those outcomes before proceeding. So there are no chances of many failures in the class or diagnostic test, formative test and remedies are going to help our students ultimately to achieve mastery. So now you have realized that the concept of mastery learning has 
a positive and tremendous impact on the entire curriculum design, our evaluation strategies and the way we are planning or aiming at learning environments in our formal settings. Thank you.